Welcome, everyone. This is how to build a gaming computer. This is picking out parts and what those parts mean to you. It is going to be very simplified. We can go into detailed questions afterwards or if you have them there. Um, how many of you have uh, built a gaming PC before or just bought them? OK. A few hands. Well, I'm, I'm Jay, or AWOL, or mostly AWOL. I've been doing MAGFest for I don't know how many years. I've been building PCs for well over 25 years and gaming for much longer. And to me, why PC gaming? Because it's I can do just about everything I want. I also have a computer for work, programming, you know, any number of stuff like that. So, so the, well, the first thing you're building a uh, computer of any computer type, gaming or non, is you'll need a CPU or you know processing unit. And there's two choices: AMD and Intel. I bet you all heard of that. The difference is between AMD and Intel. Actually, today, there's very little between the two. AMD is focused a lot more on cores, which is the individual comp uh, computing unit and a, and a, a solid piece of chip. Uh, Intel is going to catch up to AMD, though, really quickly. So uh, the sad part is gaming today doesn't really use all the cores. There's a few games that can multi or use more than two cores, but they're, they're rare. It will be changing, but it's just one of those. So cores are not necessarily what you want to gauge when you're buying a your CPU. Um, also, because AMD released their new Ryzen uh, chipsets, motherboards are support is a little lacking right now. And I have read reports that people have the, bought the Ryzen's. They have to flash their BIOS pretty often to get things working that should have been working. That's hit or miss in the next few months. I mean, you know, everything will settle down and the motherboard suppliers will figure that out and get everything working. And uh, right now, depending on the model, AMD is cheaper than Intel for comparative power and cores. It's your choice. But here's the difference between on the Intel line. The Intel is i3, i5, i7. You know, what does that mean to you other than it's a 3, 5, and a 7? Well, i3s are all dual cores except for uh, Actually, no, all our dual cores with hyper-threading. Hyper-threading is basically a fake core. It, at best, can do twice the work as one core, but you know, ultimately, it's still one machine or one core working that can just run things twice at times. Quad cores, or the i5s, are quad cores, but no hyper-threading. So you have four real cores, but no that virtual hyper or virtual cores going in there. And the i7s are quad cores right now. They are coming out with eight cores and whatever with hyper-threading. So you, in a sense, you get eight cores, or at least your machine will see it as eight cores. Uh, with Ryzen, there's, uh, they start out with just more cores. So their, their three series is a quad core without hyper-threading. So right now, their three series is better than the i3, which the benchmarks actually do show that. The five... The 5 Series is just quad or a hex core CPU with hyper-threading, which does blow out the i5s because they don't have hyper-threading. And there's the 7 Series, which is an 8-core CPU, and they, they actually have a 16-core CPU coming out well with hyper-threading. But due to some reason, the benchmarks still say the i7 is slightly better. Don't know why. Can't tell you why. That's just the way it is when people tested them out. Um, I'm not going to really tell you between the two which ones you buy. My personal preference right now, as of if I was going to buy a computer today, would get an Intel CPU. In two months, that may change once you start seeing what AMD is doing and motherboard support coming out and drivers being up to date and working properly. So when you have this uh, CPU, computers are hot, hot, hot. So you're going to need a heat sink or a big fan or liquid cooling to keep these cool. These, I have a small one over here. I'm sure you all have seen the, the wonderful custom cases that have fans that are like this tall heat sinks. Believe it or not, this is all you really need. I won't tell you otherwise. This is an Intel stock heat sink.
Okay. Um, heat sinks come in many different varieties. They're easier to use. They do make noise. I mean, you have a big fan that has to blow pretty heavily to keep air cycling over the CPU. Um, like I said, they're easy to use. They just usually just pop down, you push pins in, and you're done. Liquid cooling, there are two varieties. There is the already made unit, it's a radiator of a heat sink and uh, pump are already all in one. You don't have to worry about liquid or anything. They're easier to use than doing it yourself, but they require a lot of time and effort to figure out how you're going to route where you need to route the cables and cords and the plumbing. And then you can do it yourself, which I do not recommend unless you really know what you're doing. Doing it yourself is you're cutting hose, you're crimping hose, you're putting hose together, you're filling it up, crossing your fingers to hope that you have no leaks whatsoever when you first turn it on, because if you have a leak, your computer may be gone. Um, and one last thing when you're buying heat sinks, make sure it fits, supports your CPU. Some of the AMDs are slightly different shapes than the Intels, and so forth. they need to be a little longer or a little wider in places, and their, their mount points on the motherboard would be different as well. Um, some of them are cross-compatible. They just come with different mounts. Oh, there's some pictures of uh, various heat sinks you can see in the market today. The bottom, bottom left is on a, a self-contained unit a water cooling system. And now you need to put all this stuff. You bought your CPU, you bought your, your, your uh, heat sink cooling, and you put it in the motherboard. Very important. The motherboard needs to support your CPU. Exactly. Uh, this does require research if you have no clue what you're doing. Thankfully, someone has made PC Part Picker. I don't know if anyone here has heard it or used it. Use it, because you can pick out everything you want and it will tell you who sells it for how much and then it will tell you if it's compatible. Um, it's one of the best websites I've, I've ever seen for building a PC nowadays because it just takes out all the, the brain, brain power you need to build a PC. Now motherboards come in different sizes. You have an ATX which is the normal bigger size and they have two, basically two to three smaller so micro ATX and a mini ATX. You can see on the pictures roughly size. Uh, this is Basically, your preference. Um, the smaller motherboards do lack expansion slots for graphics cards or other things, but like I build a smaller PC so I can bring it to places like Lance. So I don't have to carry a, a big case like this. Um, but the big case like this can hold more graphics cards or more network cards or more hard drives. You, know, you name it, you can fill it up with more information and more, more things to do different stuff. Um, and also, you know, you can use it as a nice, you know, something to put your computer on the floor and put stuff on top of it. To um, my recommended choices on brands for motherboards is Asus, MSI, and Gigabyte. You'll notice there are other brand manufacturers out there. there are, some are good, some are not. Some are okay, some are worth the money, some are really worth the money. I mean, they're $2, he's like, oh, okay. Um, but these three, they have bargain boards as well as high-end boards. So you can easily find something in your price range. And then the other thing else is the features on the motherboard, just based on what you want. Like most of them now have ethernet, most of them now have audio, but you know, it's up to you. Some of them have double networks. Yes? Can a wonderful board affect the quality of the product or is it just limiting the, what you can? It, it can, depending on what it can do. Like Number like graphics cards usually require a PCI Express times 16 lane. You can buy motherboards that don't have that slot I and mean, it will still work, but you're limited to how much data can be sent to your graphics card. So you wanna make sure if you're gonna buy a high-end graphics card, to make sure you're, you have a slot that can support the graphics card. Or the biggest thing, if you wanna run two graphics cards in an SLI or a Crossfire configuration, you'll need to make sure that you have both slots and it can do it as well and then have the, the wiring between the two for full speed. And uh, now we're on to the graphics cards. This is where PC gaming becomes fun. 
like CPUs, you have two choices. Technically, you have three choices, but I'm not going to go over Intel integrated graphics because while, yes, you can game on it, you don't really want to. Uh, but you do have AMD and NVIDIA. You have uh, tons of choices on both sides. Both, both manufacturers give you bargain cards all the way up to I'm rich and don't know what to do with my money type cards. Um, both have similar technologies. You're not going to get one over another. Um, you may get some driver technologies that's different, but you know, that's the only thing. Um, for, for right now, uh, advanced driver features on NVIDIA are locked behind a, a login wall. You have to have a user account to even get like their shadow play, their auto update of drivers, the game compatibility settings, which uh, some people like, some people don't like. I just need to let you know. The basic driver is available without having to log in, but anything else after that, you have to log in with either with your Google account, you create an account. And, NVIDIA is obviously using that data for something, so that's just for you to think about. Um, uh, the model lines, as I said, that each one has a, uh, different ranges of models from budget to gaming. Right now, they make it simple. The lower the number, the worse it is. This is basically how you think of it. Um, NVIDIA uses uh, one or two digit, the first one or two digits as their model number and their next two as their, their where it sits in that range, in that model. Uh, AMD is just a one digit with their Radeon X and then, or an R and then their numbers. Uh, as I said, graphics cards can do, you can run two at a time or three at a time to multiply your uh, power of the graphics cards for your games. Um, there's some things about it. So you're not going to get double the performance out of it. Uh, some games don't support SLI or Crossfire, and you have to run the games in full screen only. So if you have multiple monitors and like all tabbing out, you're not using, when you put it in Windows mode, you're not using SLI or in the power behind it. So you may spend all this money, but you're playing games that you're here and then all tab out, you're not going to see the benefit from it. My recommendation is save your money, just buy one graphics card. Um, until a lot more games start wanting to support it again to make it useful, it's just a waste of money. Or unless you're using the graphics cards for other purposes than gaming, like mining bitcoins or doing heavy math with the CUDA cores or whatever. And uh, so my quick answer of graphics cards, buy the NVIDIA card in the 10 series that fits your budget. These are the, the manufacturer's suggested retail prices currently for the NVIDIA graphics cards. So you can see their high end is $699 and the lowest is $80. So you can easily find something in that range that will give you what you need for what you're willing to spend. Uh, but I do wanted to give you a warning. The, the GTX 1060 3 gigabyte, apparently there's two versions of that out there. Make sure you get the one that has the bet more CUDA cores, the more cores processors in it. They have one that has like 200 less for some reason, but they marked it at the same price, and it's a little slower of a card. I only noticed this doing the research, looking for NVIDIA cards, that they had two versions of the same card and didn't make any dis difference between the two. Okay, now we're on to uh, memory. Everyone needs memory. I need memory. How much RAM do you need in your computer? Without looking at the screen, how much RAM do you think you guys going to need? 32? Uh, 8 is really what you really need for gaming. I do recommend 16 if you can afford it. I mean, it's, it's a price thing. You should get your computer will just run a little bit nicer. After 16, other than heavy processing load or memory load, you're best spending money putting it into the graphics card. So if you wanted 32 gigs of RAM, and you had limited money, you might as well save that $100 or $200, put it into your graphics card, get a better graphics card for performance. Uh, personally, I do have 32 in my machines, and I just leave everything open. It's the only reason, but really don't need it. 16, it'll be plenty for gaming and, and general computer usage as well. Uh, but as I said, there is really no honest limit. If I had all the money in the world, I would max out my memory in every computer I could, just because why not? Uh, and then what you'll see when you're looking at memory is this DDR3, DDR4, DDR5. DDR is, is basically a, uh, 
It's double data rate. It's a, uh, sorry, it's a type of computer memory. You'll see it. There's three, four, and fives are like the generations, and each of them are different. So you can't take a four and put it into a three and work. Um, and there, there's also speeds. Again, I didn't want to go too deep into it. There's memory speed on uh, memory in megahertz, and it's how fast it can read write. I wasn't going to go too deep up, but check your motherboard, your manual or your motherboard's box to tell you what type of memory it takes. Again, PC Part Picker is great for this. They'll tell you if it's compatible or not, because some motherboards could take DDR4, some could take DDR5, or some take DDR3, and they just, until you get there, you're like, oh shoot, I bought the wrong memory. Yes? In, in general, yes, but not always, because you could go, let's say you had a four, but you, because of the way it's coming out, four has been out for a while, it's been manufactured enough that there may be enough stock that prices come down on it. Whereas five is brand new right now, so stocks may not be there. So it may be cheaper to go with the four, but, or the five, or whatever. It's just one of those check to see what, especially if you're doing this on a budget. Um, just to, to check to see what the prices is. Like five, it might like, oh yeah, let's get a five, it's faster, it's better. Oh wait, it's three times more expensive than going to four of the same memory amount because it's just brand new or, or the stock's not there. So. I'm sure some people will say yes, I'm gonna say no. It, I'm sure you benchmarks, you get a few extra points just from the speed, but you know, in, in my my experience, I just buy the memory. It goes compatible to motherboard, and I haven't seen any any difference. I mean, I'm sure there's difference, but perceivable difference is what I'm I'm going at here. Well, fun fun stuff with storage. There's two two ver well, there's more than two versions, but the two main versions: solid states and uh. Hard disk drives, the spinning spinny drives. Um, for those who don't know, solid states are like USB memory sticks. They're not exactly, but you know, they're just, there's no moving parts. There's fast access times. The read write times are great. They're just more expensive. The old spinning hard drives are hard, hard disk drives. Uh, they're slower access, have a lot more space than you can you know get on an SSD, and, and they're cheaper. Just to face it. There's also different types of SSDs. There's ones that are called M2, M2 drives, M2 SATAs, and they're like memory chips that you just slap into your motherboard. Um, they're even more expensive than just the normal SSDs, but they are generally faster. Um, that's not always the case. You need to look at what generation you're looking at. Yes? Yes, and actually, yeah. if you can afford, buy both. You, as for your SSD, you want to put your operating system on it. Uh, and your, the current games you're playing, or will be playing heavily. Um, and for the, the hard disk drive, you get it's your general storage. They're bigger, they can hold a lot more, so you put your photos, other software, your other games that you may not care, like, oh, I'm willing to wait two minutes to load up, like, Grand Theft Auto, which is never going to have to lo wait for a loading screen ever again type thing. So it's just one of those choices. I, like, I make a choice in my personal machine. I'm like, okay, am I going to be playing this a lot? Is it going to have a lot of loading screens? I may put it on SSD and move something over. I mean, it's your choice. If you can only afford one, get a hard disk drive. Get the spinning types. I know it will be slower, but you'll get a lot more space, and you won't be sitting there, oh, i got to delete this game to put another game on. And Yes. Um, you can do external SSDs. Um, I only would recommend it for just storing. 
of data, like not trying to access like just like backups or things like that. You don't care for access speed because it would be USB only. Um, even though you may be able to find an external SATA connection, it may not take the same route as it is on the motherboard, just due to how to make it. Um, it's it's always worth the shot. I've I've found been lucky with some USB three drives that actually are pretty fast. That they may be usable, but I would just recommend any externals is literally for backups or your transport. You know, like I'm going to my friend's house today. Let's take this and yes. Okay, he's talked about rating drives. Rating drives allows you to take a whole series of hard drives and make it into one drive to your computer. So you, that's all you see. Uh, I do recommend doing that. Um, this is a general beginner course for, for gaming PCs. So I didn't bring up RAID just because it requires some knowledge. It may require an extra card in your computer or re may require your motherboard having the support on it. Is that it's a question of RAID. Um, RAIDs, they come in different varieties. You have RAID 1, which is two hard drives that have this exact same data. It's called mirroring. So you, uh, if one dies, you, you still go. You have another drive with all the exact data. You have RAID 0, which is two drives act as one drive, or as many drives as you want. And there's, again, many different RAIDs going out there. You have RAID 5, 6, 50. 1 plus 0, 10 plus 1, you, you have a whole whole selection of RAIDs. That is a more advanced. Um, I'd be glad to talk RAIDs after this if you want more information, but it's, it's a, little, a little more advanced than I was planning on covering for this. Uh, and as of at least last Friday, the best size hard drives for your money right now. If you like S, uh, SSDs, is 512 or one terabyte, depending where you're buying it. Uh, it's either $220 or $400. Um, and I only did this because this is how I buy my hard drives. I looked at, to see where the price then skyrockets for the next level up because then you want to drop down. And for a hard, hard disk drive, two terabyte or three terabyte, surprisingly enough, they're the same price. No idea why. Yes. The biggest reason why you don't want to go higher because they do make uh, 1,500 or 15,000, sorry, RPM hard drives. Those are usually meant for server or enterprise grade servers, and they are very expensive because they're meant for a. They're made to a stricter quality control and B, they're limited in supply because it's only meant for enterprise. You can if you find the right one for the right price, it's just, you know, they're not generally what you'll find in the store. You know, you have to order those special some cases. Yes? Yes. Yeah, it, you could get the same size SSD, but like, let's say you had that found a two terabyte hard drive that like I said was 160. That's general. A two terabyte SSD drive right now is probably around let's see, probably around 800 to 900 dollars versus the 160. So that's why where I stopped with the 512 or one terabyte for SSDs because the next jump up for the next size is. Just not the same worth, not the same price per terabyte as it is here. Yes. Okay, I'll go with the, the hybrid drives. Um, hybrid drives have is basically a hard disk drive, but it has a, a smaller SSD that, that you use for caching. Um, it allows to write start writing files fast as possible to the hard drive, and then like, let's say you finish copying, the hard drive then runs itself and just moves stuff off the SSD to the hard drive, so you don't see the slowdown. It takes it when it's when it's not doing anything. And it will also keep a copy of your most used files in that SSD cache 
So they're always available for the fastest speed possible to comb off. Um, they are very prevalent. I mean, you can see them out there. Um, you're more than willing to spend your money to buy them. They, they do work as advertised. I just never, never found them to be worth it. I mean, if you're going to spend that money in research to look for a hybrid, it may still be cheaper to buy an SSD and a straight hard drive for your storage. Um, and as you said, the do Western Digital, I think, is probably the only one that makes those Veloci Velociraptors or whatever they're called, the 10,000 10, RPM. That's marketing. I don't think they're any better than the normal $7,200, except they sell them to the gamers who really don't understand what's going on and think, oh, I need that. It has a cool name. It has Velocity thing in it, and it puts it in there. I mean, if they're worth it and the right price, you may find them on a sale. Go for it. But just keep on looking for standard Western Digitals, uh, Seagate. Uh, this is about it right now. Last not least, cases. I can't tell you anything. Cases coming. Like, you have pictures. You can get anything you want. Make it yourself. Just get what you think looks cool. My recommendation Get ones the screwless, they have thumb screws or they have tabs, so you don't need a screwdriver to move, add hard drives or anything. You just, uh, and one very, very important, if you can look at your case, make sure there's no hard, rough edges. Make sure the rounded edges, because when you're putting these together, you're gonna be hitting those and you'll be cutting yourselves on those. And I've, I've had cheap cases and they're not fun trying to put together when you move your hand and you have a new cut in your finger. Um, so rounded edges are always preferred for me. Yes? They would usually state that they, actually the first one is, they come in different sizes to match the motherboard sizes. Like those ATX, micro ATX, mini ATX, they will, like this big one right here in the corner, the white one, that's a full size ATX board. It will come with standard drill holes or marking holes to mount the mother, any ATX motherboard to it. Um, and usually smaller too, they can always go smaller into a bigger case. Um, and they will, they'll tell you, like if you look at a case, like these, I know these pictures aren't, just none of them are to scale, but like if you look at a store or online and you look at one, it will tell you micro ATX or ATX or mini ATX is what they're gonna accept in, in them. No, no, ATX is a standard. It's going to be every ATX size motherboard, no matter who makes it, will have be the same size and have the same mount locations. Um, the only when the only thing that changes is when you start getting to an enterprise servers. They have an ATX that's not the same as commercials. You know, so they they may say it's an ATX board, but it's not going to fit the mount holes for some reason. Don't know why. Yes, and I'll get to you later. Most motherboards nowadays come with built-in networking and built-in audio. Um, for audio, unless you're an audiophile, it's going to be great, perfect for you. For networking, most of them are going to work, and they're going to work just fine. If you're really, really cared, you can look for ones that may have an Intel Ethernet chip in it on the motherboard. Um, there's also another one called a Killer Networks, which is supposedly some high-end networking Ethernet adapter. I've seen it be okay, it works fine. Um, or if you're really, really dedicated, you can buy an external card, Ethernet card, to be what you need. Like, let's say you need four ports for some reason, because you, you're a hobbyist networking enthusiast and you want to set up a couple networks, or you want to bind your network ports together to be act as one giant one. Um, but most of the time, it's built in to the motherboard, audio, for both audio and networking. Yes?
Yeah. And, and you're right. And unfortunately, if you're buying online, you can't do these. Like, uh, around here, there's stores with Micro Center. You can walk in and you can look at their cases. Then you can see, oh, yeah, it's like, oh, this is just a panel that comes right off. And so for access, is easy. Or you may find out, oh, I have to move this panel, then this panel, then this panel just to get into it. Or, or you find it's very cheap aluminum made, and you won't know just a picture online. Now, hopefully, Amazon, Newegg, any of the places you buy computer parts have reviews, and someone has bought it and will tell you it's a piece of junk because it's very thin aluminum mm -hmm. that vibrates and doesn't make clean fits. Um, but yeah, he, he has a good suggestion. Make, you know, Yeah, again, you know, I build a small one to bring for land, so, yes? Are there any limitations between cases and, uh, say, water cooling or liquid cooling or fans? Yes and no. It's, again, yeah, uh, most of them will always supply the support the fans, support water cooling. The radiators are set up to be the same size as any most fans you'd buy, but you may have issues with how the tube for the, the water or the liquid runs through, like, you may be able to put a fan there, but when you put your radiator there, the tube may hit the back of the case or hit something else trying to come out to get to the, the CPU. So again, that's you're going to have to see. Um, normally, I wouldn't say for any bigger size case, you won't have an issue trying to get one in. It's just, but you know, it's one of those. If you can see the insides, you may be able to tell that's not going to work based on how it needs the routes. So it's, again, you're going to have to look. You know, cases are going to be researched to make sure you need to put fit what you need to put in there. Yes? Yeah, it, it all depends on how much, you know, you have your liquid routed around in your, your case. Now, just to, to about the, the liquid cooling, the... The all-in-one unit, the self-contained unit I talked about, it was only for, meant for the CPU. It adds a little weight, but maybe only an extra pound. I've, I've used it for one of my computers, and I had no issues with, with transportability on it and adding too much weight to it. Um, custom mounts or units that, you know, you may see pictures of this big tank of liquid that's bubbling. That's going to add a lot of weight because it's going to have liquid usually going to CPU, the graphics cards, maybe even some chips on the motherboard to keep them cool. And that is just a lot of liquid. So, yes? And, and power needs too. If you you know if you see your electric bill get really high after buying a new machine, which is possible, graphics cards will pull 400 watts alone. You know that's on top of your your computer doing probably another 100 watts depending on the CPU. So, yes. So is the CPU really the only thing that you use in connection on this thing as a cooling solution? Yes, the graphics cards will all have a cooling solution built on that will be adequate for normal use. Normal use is you don't change overclock it or underclock it, which graphics cards allow you to do through the drivers. Um, and even with the CPUs, like this one came with the CPU I bought, which is some Intel, perfectly adequate. Intel is going to give you one unless, you, again, you overclock it or it gets dusty or the fan stops working. Thankfully, the CPUs are all intelligent enough today that they'll slow themselves down if that's the case, or turn your machine off before damage happens. But so, but most of the times, all the CPU coolers are going to be rated to keep your CPU at stock levels cool enough to function without issues. It's when you start playing with overclocking that they may be inadequate to keep your CPU cool. Yeah. What kind of uh, wear is your CPU for? Like, <coughs> um, it, because the CPU can have some sort of 
the case. Yeah, um, the Muller board will have ports that you can plug in. The, the case will give you a cable that will go between the two or it's hardwired and then you'll plug it into the motherboard and your motherboard will have headers for those plugins. Um, and then on the back, they're built into the motherboard. So that one, you can easily say, oh, I can get however many by looking at the back of the picture on the box or on the description for the motherboard. They'll tell you how many are hardwired on the back of the computer. So. Uh, what do you mean, like, do you use CD, DVD, or? Yes. I mean, you're supposed to buy. I mean, I, well, I, mean, I don't really I care. Most, most places, if, you, if you're buying from, like, a computer store, like, say, Micro Center, or one around here, they may have a, a cheaper version of Windows that goes with a brand new machine that you're putting together. It's called an OEM copy. Um, if you're buying online, you may still buy, be able to buy an OEM copy because apparently no one cares about the rules. Those are only supposed to be sold with the parts, you know, when you buy the computer. Or you can just buy a version of Windows, you know, the home premium or home or whatever lines they have now. The first thing you'll see when you turn on your computer will be the computers, what they, they call a BIOS, even if it's really not a BIOS now, nowadays, they have a, another technology. And that is basically a hardware chip on your motherboard that comes that you don't have to do anything with, that just gets everything ready to hand over to the operating system. So when, the, when you first install Windows, you'll have to have the disk, you put up either or a memory stick. The BIOS will read that to boot and it allows you to start the install process for Windows or any other operating system really for that matter. Yes? And just to add, to, it's good for 30 days, as far as I know. You can use it after 30 days. The only thing you can't do at this, at this point in time, unless they changed it, is change any personalization settings. So you can't change your wallpaper. Well, you can. You just don't do it the same way. Microsoft obviously can't figure out how to stop that. And the last time I checked, it only allowed you to run a few different programs at once. I think three was the number. Yeah, and that's active programs, not like background stuff is still fine. It's just three active windows or programs. <coughs> if you're a college student, you may be able to check, you may be able to get it for 10 bucks through your college. So, so you can get a legit windows license for $10 through your college. Or your job, if, you, if your job has a or if you work, uh, definitely if you work nonprofit, nonprofits get it for ten dollars as well. Or you can run Linux. Yeah. Yes. It's it's an intentional thing. It is. Uh, yeah, you, you, it's, it's something it does before even Windows loads, so you have to set up and configure. And in most cases, they make it hard to even accidentally do it. Like, they're going to say, you have to turn something on in a BIOS that says, oh, okay, well, now you allow you to play with the settings. Have fun. And usually with the warning, we're not responsible with this voids warranties, deals all that fun stuff. So, so that would be a it is, a, it is usually done in a BIOS or the BIOS, whatever they call the BIOS now. Like you, you hit delete or F2 when you boot, turn on the machine, you enter, and then you can change uh, frequency of the, the, the base frequency and then the multiplication of that frequency for the chip, which is usually how they overclock, they build it. And also supply more voltage through the CPU because sometimes you overclock it and it's not getting enough power, so you may need to increase the power to overclock. 
I recommend going to overclocking forums to, to learn. <coughs> yeah, you can't accidentally do it, but it, I mean, it is a great way of buying a cheap CPU and getting something that blows out the next line up that would have cost you $200 more. So, I don't overclock, just so you know. It's, I don't find it worth it anymore, and it takes a lot of time because you got to find where your system's stable at, and that just takes takes time in you doing, nope, not yet, nope, not yet, oh, there it is, oh, got to go back, no, it's just too much time to overclock. Uh, oh, we have power supplies. So it's very important. Very first line is don't cheap out. Don't buy the $20 power supply, trust me. You want something quality, you're sending, as I said, around 500 watts to your system. $20 power supply may be able to do that, but hey, look, there's a power surge. Oh, there, there, there goes your computer because it shorted everything out. Um, you'll need enough power to run everything. As I said, the graphics cards pull, pull a lot of power. Now, you could do this all by hand going through. My, my CPU says it pulls 65 watts at max load. Graphics card. That, let's go to PC part picker. It's great. Every single time you add a piece, including a hard drive, it increases how much power over in the little box that tells you you're going to be pulling 500 watts. So you need to make sure you have a big enough power supply to, to do this. Um, some cases come with power supplies. Uh, be, be careful because sometimes they're the cheap power supplies I don't recommend, but they sometimes they're actually pretty good power supplies. So, you know, if you buy a case, make sure it has one or not. Um, and then you can get modular power supplies, or which allows you to plug the cables that you need it only in. Uh, otherwise, you get those rat nest of cables that you have to hide somewhere if you, if you uh, get that. And one last thing, yeah, the module you see, you can plug in what you need. So that way right, you can only have the bare minimum cords or you can have the rat's nest all coming out that you have to tuck away somewhere. Everyone sees this, and I doubt most people know what this means. You see your power supply has different 80 plus ratings and what they mean, because no one really knows what they mean. Uh, basic 80 plus ratings means it will be at least 80% efficient at 20% load, 50 load, and 100% load. It's basically that's what it's telling you. And then you have the bronze, silver, and gold, and those are all just slightly better efficiencies at those same load levels. Um, you can see it here. So what you want to do when you buy a power supply, you're going to, let's say, you, you know you need 500 watts. You know, really, you don't really want to run anything on 100% load, so you want to try to get something, five, whatever equals 80, 80, 500 watts at 80% or, or less to give you room to grow. Yes, they do. So, yeah, because they're using better, better components inside to convert the power, or they even may use a totally different way of converting AC to DC power. Yes? I've never heard of 80 plus white. Uh, I don't know. I would have to look into it. Um, No, the risk of shorting a system is usually just due to cheap power supplies or cheap components in your power supplies. Like, if you if you buy if you buy a name a quality good power supply, you run it a hundred, you can run it a hundred. Um, or and but it's just not going to be as efficient. Eighty is usually the most where the efficiency stops, you know, stops taking place. Yes. I am not going to go into surge protectors. Uh, yeah, I was, I was, you should use one. You should even go with a battery backup system. Um, two reasons why I'm not going to go on the search. A, because I didn't think about it. And B, I, most of the things, I think everyone uses one for everything electronic nowadays, at least for the like desk type of system, maybe not for kitchen utensils or utilities, but for computers, TVs, everyone seems to have a surge protector. Um, but that's a good question, and, you know, get a surge protector. I've, I've been the unlucky recipient of lightning hitting the cable cable line. I think it was the cable line. 
took out a PS2, and took out my router. My computer was saved due to the surge protector. But I still, I still had to buy a new router, so. Yeah, it, that that's totally possible. I mean, they don't really make protectors, though. You yeah, you you can, but then that that takes a hit, and hopefully nothing in between that and your computer gets hit. I mean, that's the that's the downside. Uh, uh, yes. I rec for full size cases. I recommend Mondra power supplies. Because you just you have only what you need. If you're going with smaller cases, it may be best in some cases to get this the rat tail here. And I say this because they're usually all in one location. They come out in a bowl, and something may be sitting here on a smaller case. Whereas these all require having jacks, so that you may have a card coming here. Now you can't use these these slots for powering up, and they they may be the important ones. So that that's going to be a, like, and I I know from experience because it's happened to me where I got everything fit and I put my last thing in with graphics card and it doesn't fit because all these cables coming out of power supply. So. I'm gonna, here, here's how I'm gonna answer that question. I'm gonna say they're about the same, but the problem is when you see the module power supplies, they're on slightly higher just level brands that may or may not necessarily make another version of it. Whereas most of the corded ones, while you still get them, are the cheaper brands. So. I mean, I, I can't imagine it costing too much money because the wires still need to be there. I mean, it may be extra, you know, maybe an extra buck for all the plastic, you know, connections, but I can't imagine it being too much. Yes? That's the next one. That one's actually putting it together. Like for those who've never picked up a screwdriver and putting in screws and motherboards and all the fun stuff. Yes. So the 80 plus white is the same as the standard. Okay, so if someone did the research, the 80 plus white is I guess, the same as. Thank you. Oh, I keep going the wrong way. Okay, you've heard me recommend PC Part Picker. Go there. If you've never used it or never built a computer, they have builds that people like me put on there for various ranges of prices to what you want to do. Go through their build list. If you don't know what you need or want, you may be able to find a $500 computer that does everything you need and you thought, oh, it's going to cost $1,000. Or you can just go there and just play. You know, pick your NCPU, and then it's going to say, when you go to the motherboards, it's going to say, here are all the compatible motherboards. You'd be like, what? The same thing with power supplies. Um, another good resource for qu asking questions is uh, the subreddit, build a PC on reddit.com. Those people are great. They also have builds for various different price ranges and, and goals as well. And then uh, also a good question, like, I got this CPU. And this motherboard, but I need to have something. They'll be like, oh, here's what you're going to need, and they'll point you to a, a place to get what you need or tell you what you need. So I recommend this, both those two resources for building a, your, your PC. Yes? Yeah. 
Yeah, when you it, it does. When you go to place, say you picked a graphics card, it's going to say you can buy it at Amazon, you can buy it at Newegg, you can go to Walmart or go to Microsoft, and here's the price, and they're going to list the prices. They also do price history. So you can say, oh, look, the same, you know, these happen to get cheaper every August for some reason. It's coming up in August. Let's wait like that extra month to see if it goes on sale or whatever happens in August that the price drops. So. It does have price history. That's yeah, usually. <laughs> so I mean, yeah. Yeah, PC part picker is pretty advanced. It will go back as far as they have history for pricing, and and on different locations too. Like they'll have price history on Amazon or price history on Newegg. So it's not even just like overall price. It's by the store. Yes. Correct. Yeah. Well, not always. It, it all depends. Like it's it is a a sale. They're trying to sell you a motherboard with processor and memory in a case, and they they'll knock fifty dollars off or whatever. So, but yeah, for for trying to do this on a budget, definitely shop around. Look at local stores to see if they have if they have anything. Um, some of them even offer it online, like Newegg and Tiger Direct will offer, you buy these three things, you'll get it for cheaper than buying it separately, so. so any other questions? Yes? It could be. Um, most motherboards nowadays, depending on what you bought your first initial, how you bought the configuration for the eight, because you can buy them as eight one gig chips, two four gig chips, one eight gig chip. Maybe not one, it all depends on the motherboard. Um, but you may have enough slots that are empty, so you just buy another eight gigs of two four gigs and pop them in and you're done. Um, if you filled them up with eight one gig sticks, you're going to have to pull them all out to fully upgrade into the 16 gigabyte or gigs. So, I mean, yeah, but generally Windows doesn't care. You can turn it off, pop in new chips, turn it on. Windows says, oh. Yeah, it says the next talk is actually putting these together, and I can, you know, I'll show you how easy it is to drop it in. Windows won't care. Unfortunately, I won't be able to turn on this machine. Someone spilled water on my motherboard today. And I'm not going to turn it on. I'll put it together, but, <laughs> but, but yeah, memory is just pop it in and go. <laughs> I'm still not going to turn it on. I'm going to let I'm going to let it sit for a while without any any water. Probably. Microsoft's really picky, and I can't tell you what it is anymore because they kind of like to fully change it. Um, generally, it's motherboard and CPU. That they see a different motherboard CPU, they won't work or won't, you'll have to re register it. Um, you may need to call, you may be able to do it, or you may need to call their 800 line and tell them you got a new computer and they do their magic to like it happen. Um, in general, I do not recommend, if you change your motherboard and CPU out, do not recommend having a pre-installed version of Windows that was running on the old machine. It may work, but it may not work. I always would start fresh, either with a new hard drive or wipe out a hard drive and install fresh again. And I've, I've had it work otherwise, but you know, sometimes it's just you know, Windows, it's too much changed and it's just not going to work fully as well as expected because drivers got conflicted somewhere or something. Uh, that's all I have unless there's more questions. Yeah. Right now, I prefer the fans. I mean, it's a, it is a trade-off. You, you get noise in fans. Where liquid cooling are usually quieter. Um, only and only reason I choose fans is I don't overclock and I don't care about the the noise in the background. Like maybe because I've been around computers for so long that it, you, you just ignore the fan noise. So, but it, it's it's a choice.
I've, I've had done liquid cooling once in the past, and it was okay. I've done, I've, I've only done the, where you buy the package all sealed, and n not too easy to set up. I had to figure out how the cords would bend around things, and it required me taking it in and out a few times before I realized this is the best orientation for it to sit. And of course, I took a picture, and the first thing someone says is like, "It's installed upside down." You can't install it. You can't install it upside down. But most people like the logos to be right side up. And my logo was upside down. <laughs> I mean, I mean, yeah. I was like, "So what's the point?" Like, I'm not even going to see it. it. Sits on the floor. I mean. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so I want to, um, before you start running a baby, pre-fab wire filament, do you ever have to worry about the filament or anything? No, they're, they're, uh, they're, so they're sealed units that with whatever, I don't, it's not water in it, but some like antifreeze type thing, and I don't think it evaporates. Um, you still need to worry about leaks, but you'll know right away with those. I mean, like it's not going to, unless you damage it, it's not going to just start leaking. You know, if it's leaking, you'll pull it out of the box and you're like, oh. So, you so. yeah, you should be able to see that before. Or, as I said, unless you did something damage, like, you know, pull the cable or pull the tubes too hard. You know, if you're going to do liquid cooling for the first time, I recommend the kits, not the, the self contained kits. They do make kits for the do it yourselves where you have to cut the pipes and seal them up and pour your water in and pump it through the system, which I don't recommend, period, ever. I mean, I know people do it. They've, those, those are the ones that show off their systems, though, usually. Like mine, it sits under a desk. No one sees it. So. Well, thank you for coming. Hopefully I answered a few questions. Yes. Uh huh. Yes, Jared. <laughs> what? What's your question? So when when you're talking about memory, is it generally the lower capacity that you can use? I didn't get into that here, just because it, it has a more advanced topic of memory speeds and rewrites and access and. Generally, generally yes. Um. I, I personally don't care about it anymore. I mean, because because you're not seeing great, between the low and the highs is like maybe five nanoseconds, whatever the measurement is now. So, yeah, it's it's so so negligible now. Like, you know, 10 years ago, hell yeah, you always wanted to look for the lowest latency memory because it's now gonna be faster and you can do this, but you know, it's just now a difference in memory that I don't care. The only thing I care about, is it becomes the same. You buy all your memory that's the same. Because you, while you can mix it, you know, it performs at the slowest, so. Yeah.